So I am back at the Charleston Antique Mall to pick up some things, hopefully, that are still here from my trip last week uh, after doing a little more research and feeling pretty confident about the pricing I can get. So um, I'm going to look around, see if I can find anything else, of course, too. But there's three things I'm going back for specifically. So let's see if they're still here. Let's go. So I go back and the horses are still there and I'm all excited until I get my hands on it um, because it ends up not actually being a bronze. It's by Montana Lifestyles and it's pretty much priced on point. Very lightweight. You can see I'm just Where holding it with one hand. And it's gone. Color me sad face. It's gone. Well, that was a huge disappointment. And I am so upset with myself right now that I did not grab those or at least look up those Raymore pieces while I was here. Um, they, yeah, that just confirms what I figured out about them is that they were super rare and priced really well um hey you know what uh live and learn <laughs> i will be more careful next time it's still that hesitant hesitancy to spend a bigger amount of money on something and i'm still training myself on that so uh it's a learning process so anyway i did spot another antique store over here in the same parking lot so maybe this isn't all for naught uh i'm gonna go over there and see what i can find Let's go. Okay, well, I am uh, striking out today. Um, this was a little antique shop and I wasn't really comfortable like openly filming because um, I'd never been in there before. So um, they had some neat things, but prices were on point. I'm not gonna say they were high. I'm gonna say they were, they were priced for the end user. Um, no deals for resellers though. So, I'm kind of thinking I'm going to head over to the mall that I have space in. I haven't actually shopped it for a while, so let's see what I can find there. Let's go. First booth I'm in has a 50% off sale going, so I'm pretty much looking at everything. Felt this bunny because I thought for a minute it was one of those little flocked banks, and those do sell. Then I spot it up here. Do you see him? This little squirrel plush. He was priced at $12.99, so half price would be $6.50. I love him. I tend to grab realistic looking stuffed animals. The black Americana pieces are going to be interesting to see what the market does with those since eBay is pretty much not allowing them to be sold anymore. I loved these cantaloupe dishes, bowls actually, um, but they were, they were priced a little high for anything I could do with them. I believe they were like 20 bucks a piece. I wish I had taken a better picture of the tag. I thought this was one of those Tetsuban cast iron teapots at first, but when I picked it up, it was super lightweight. So just made to look that way. I 
heading to one of my favorite booths here, the glass booth, and he has it all organized by color of the glasses. It's pretty spectacular to walk in here. Like if you knew exactly what you were looking for as far as glassware or Pyrex, I mean, you could just go right to it in this booth. It's pretty phenomenal. Lots of mid-century pottery as well as the glass. I'm just, I love this booth. And then across the way, this same dealer has all of their white and clear items. And it's just set up and, I mean, it just makes it look expensive. We all know milk glass and clear glass are not great sellers, but this booth really makes you want to buy it. The presentation is just, it's just phenomenal. Gonna ahead and just stop and look at some of the really pretty pieces of glass, even though I know they're not gonna be priced for resale. Awesome fiberglass double lampshade on this vintage lamp. So I see these little bins marked clearance with all this little bagged up small stuff. And I love shipping small stuff, so I'm kind of digging through to see if there's anything in here that could be a $20 bill for me. Not so much though. And then I spot these. Okay, true story. My older brother uh, used to quiz me on the helmets. I had to learn who all the teams were by their helmets. And uh, I got in trouble if I didn't know who they were. These are actually dog toys. Hilarious. $20 is about on point for that Kokeshi doll. I've sold several of those. These were really cute. I wasn't exactly sure what they were at first, but it says they are Ukrainian wood trinket boxes. Nice little pieces. This booth also had a sale running, so I was looking through. Kind of liked this basket. It was porcelain, but lined with brass. But it had a boo-boo on the bottom. My mother has the same set of tea and coffee pots. So that was interesting. carried on in the family. It was a tight squeeze in there. If my motions are a little jerky, it's because I was like trying to like back back out and hold the camera and I apologize for making you dizzy. <laughs> There's so much stuff I find myself just not attracted to. It's probably good saleable stuff, but that's the cool thing about everybody having their own niche. It says these were hand puppets. They're big, they were Boyd's. Um, just not my thing. Found another clearance sale racks. Always gotta look through, because you just never know. So many sales going on. This was a 45% off booth. I 
saw this chicken, I got really excited. Now there's been discussion, Murano, not Murano, on these art glass chickens. And the thing of it is, they still sell whether or not they truly are Murano. Even the Hobby Lobby pieces can sell for really good money. Um, but the bummer on this one was it had a firm on the price tag. So there was no sale on this piece. Otherwise, I totally would have paid $15 for this in a heartbeat. Probably could sell this for 40, 50, maybe even 60 bucks. Super easy. More glass. This is mostly depression glass, which I tend to stay away from unless it's really pretty and I get it really cheap. You know, I have a thing for minions. This booth was 20% off. Like I said, a lot of dealers are putting things on sale. Actually, I have a booth that's 50% off right now. I tend to pick these up at thrift stores. Um, 20 bucks is about on point for what I would be able to get for it. Fell in love with this little guy and 20% off, made him like 10 bucks and he came home with me. But it's personal, it's not for resale. Just to satisfy my little bird crazy drive right now. Again, another booth. Totally on sale. So I'm a looking. There's lots of good resaleable stuff in these booths that I pass by because it's just not my niche. It's not what I know at the top of my head that I can list accurately. Um, so the only things that I spend a little more time on are things like, cool things like this, um, where I think that the profit margin for me is gonna be high enough to warrant spending the time. And that's what you have to remember. Is it worth the time to do the research? Mud men. I don't know enough about mud men to even really give him a closer look. I love horse stuff. I know horse stuff. I know how much I spent on horse stuff back in the day when I was collecting. So it always attracts me. Animal stuff is really kind of one of my, my big things really liked that purple plate, but first I had to look at this big hunkin' clamshell piece and I couldn't find a price on it and I I was one-handed, so I was a little bit disadvantaged. Um, I'm one of those people that if it's not priced, I tend to not go asking and I probably should because those clamshells sell for really good money. So you can see just in a real quick uh, completed search here, clamshells are a Big seller. I mean, now, granted, these ones I'm showing you right here are what they call giant. They're like two feet. Um, but if you get down and dig through, you know, even some of the, like 21 inches and the half, look at this one's 20 and a half. So if you find one of these at a yard sale or auction or thrift store, you probably want to pick it up. And I, and I actually might go back and ask the price on that clamshell piece. Um, just to see, even if it's in the 100 to $150 range, I'm still going to make some good money if they've got it priced reasonably. So, there you go. Clamshells. This booth was mostly clothes and accessories, so I scooted by that one. This is another one, had 30% off. 
love this little now this is a piece of Murano but it was badly damaged very badly damaged which is a shame because that was a really nice piece These also are Murano and they have them they have them priced where they should be. This dealer really knows their stuff and you'll learn that as you frequent different antique malls. You'll learn the dealers where you can get a bargain and you'll learn the dealers who this is their business and they are pricing things at the retail price there. That's the beauty of an antique mall is there are so many different dealers. It's worth it to check in and see what you can find. was an interesting figurine. Had to give it a look. It's actually um, a vase or planter. Not really big enough to be a planter. It's more like a vase. <laughs> this little guy I think was made of balsa wood. He weighed almost nothing. Beautiful, beautiful chocolate pot. This booth was very hard to maneuver in. I'm not sure what that was. It was like a pottery canteen. Neat colors. Um, but there is stuff all over the ground in here and I was really concerned that I was going to start stepping on things. So um, if you have a booth in an antique mall, be wary of putting things on the ground. I love that tin. Why? It had a pretty bird on it. So see, there's, yeah, I was like, oh, I'm going to step on something. Okay, you want to talk about a stunning piece of furniture. Oh, this I believe is German. Uh, it is just amazing with the carving and uh, the marble. Oh man, this booth has some incredible pieces in it. I love those pieces of art too. There's a nice piece of carnival glass but it was priced at $40, which I, it's tiny. I'm trying to like show you with my hand. It's just a little tiny bowl, so I'm not exactly sure why the price point on that. These are really nice pieces of art glass. It was a name I did not recognize at first, and then I saw the Glass Eye Studio stickers, and I was like, ah, okay, I know that name. They sell on eBay in the $30 to $40 range. Not real high-end art glass, but decent. This is some uranium glass. No need for a black light on these. I can assure you those glow. This was an interesting little piece. And in reading the tag, it's a, I think they call them an invalid feeder. Um, so it was to feed somebody who was like bedridden. Neat little piece of history. A 
loved the horse planner. And eat he. Phone home. I tried to get my daughter to watch E.T. with me the other night, and she would have nothing of it. I love this bronze statue. Someday. I'm going to have a bronze statue in my yard. This booth has some interesting things. Um, this really screamed Blanco to me. And lots and lots of Hummels. Now, Hummels I'm really familiar with because my grandmother collected them. What you have to look at is the mark on the bottom. There are certain what they call trademarks that are worth more than others. Very, very easy to date Hummels by these marks. Most of them are not worth reselling, but there are some treasures out there still. I picked up this Sasha Brostoff, I think it's an ashtray, um, really, really nice colors. It was priced at $9.99 and I'm pretty sure I can double my money on it. Another sale, I'm telling you, the mall is full of them. Really cool glasses. This was another very, very tight squeeze. You'll see the jerkiness of the camera is because I'm, I'm sliding sideways trying not to hit anything. Even if things are priced in a booth to where you can't do resale on them, I encourage you to go and touch and pick up and feel and look at the marks and all of that. Okay, I had to do some wrestling with my conscience on, con conscious? Conscience <laughs> on this one. It is a turtle tortoise footstool and I wanted it really bad for myself, not for resale. Um, it was priced at $85, was 25% off, but I just still can't justify spending that kind of money on something like this right now. <sighs> okay, I spotted this really cute crab and he looks to be a trivet. And the sea life stuff sells really well for me, so I went ahead and picked him up. This dealer has a lot of man cave stuff, um, which is not really my thing, but what I'm looking for are the things that don't fit into that genre of stuff, um, because those are most likely to be priced at a place that Perhaps I can make some money on them. I loved this little egg dish. I don't know if it was an egg cooker 
or what, but I really like the fake eggs too. I don't know, I've got a, I got a thing for stuff that you can decorate that way with. I don't have room in my kitchen though. And then I was looking at this jadeite bowl and just to show you the bottom mark there, it was Fire King and I didn't even realize it was upside down when I was taking the shot. I just really wanted to show you the mark, but it is a Fire King jadeite bowl. This booth was decorated in such a way that just really made you want to take a bunch of chickens and farm stuff and make a cute little place in your kitchen, so to speak. That was a sleeping cat on a jar. This was really cool. Somebody just made that out of an old jewelry box and a bunch of costume jewelry. I had to pick up my little crab and uh, be on my way to the next booth. I thought these were seahorses at first, but then realized they were dragons. That was me getting off the floor, by the way. <laughs> I wasn't trying to give you a fancy zoom. Precious moments, another thing I always look at them because I, I collected them back in the 90s, um, but they generally are not worth a whole bunch, sadly, sadly. This was a beautiful display of Famille Rose China, which I don't know enough about to buy it, but I'm learning from the crazy lamp lady who knows a lot about it. This is another one of my favorite booths to look through. I've actually bought some doilies from this dealer. Lots of neat things. Then I spotted this amazing peacock mug and biscuit jar or cookie jar, I guess it would be. The prices were good. Um, they're Blue Sky Clayworks, which does some really fun stuff. Um, but I was really contemplating, really contemplating, and I, I did decide to walk away. Until I spotted this sign. I was like, oh my gosh! 50% off, that was it. I just had to go back and make sure they weren't marked firm. Uh, and they were not marked firm, so I did pick these up. So that was much better, and I am very happy. I came out with two bags and a two-page receipt, uh, but I didn't spend very much. Now I did get a couple things that are probably going in my kitchen. Um, but for the most part, I feel good that I'm going to make some good money off of this little expedition. And uh, now it's time to go home and cook some dinner. So with that, <laughs> go be profitable and make it fun. See you on the next one. Oh, hit that subscribe button and the little bell so you can get notified when I upload the next video. All right, see ya.